Hey everybody, today we're going to build a wetland marsh. So the area that I model, the Crow's Nest Pass, specifically from the BC Alberta border east towards Prince Creek, Alberta, has a whole bunch of these little areas. Right around Burmis and up in through the pass, Coleman to Sentinel, there's lots of these little backwater areas. Railroad built through that area and some of the fills cut off the natural channel of, of the river and uh, therefore you ended up with these uh, little depressions and water would gather in them. So to get the feel of the area I had to include a bunch of them on the layout. So I'm going to go over this quickly and show you how you can make your own little marsh or swamp area. Start with a nice base. This is going over top of half inch plywood and it's just cellular clay mixed up. We've gone over cellular clay before what it is. And I just applied it directly onto the plywood and made sure that I had a nice jagged edge because a marsh tends to have uh, a rough edge, not a nice smooth edge. So lots of little indentations and little points and that kind of thing. What I'm doing here is I'm just building it up because the first layer wasn't quite thick enough. So I want the banks a little taller. So uh, just going in, doing that extra layer over the top. Once you're happy, you got everything done, you got the thickness that you want, you're going to take your thumb and you're going to just blend that into any existing scenery. Once you got everything blended in nice, you're going to let that sit for a good 24 hours and let it dry. Okay, everything's dried up nice here, so we're going to hit it with some color. This is just two part interior latex uh, mixed with one part water. And you're going to apply that liberally. It's going to act as a bit of a sealant. Make sure you get uh, the edges uh, as you're going to see that bank. We're not going to pour right up to the, the top about halfway up. So you want to make sure you get some good color on that uh, the bank of the, the marsh itself. Once that's down, you don't even have to let it dry. You're just going to apply some artist acrylic. I'm using Mars Black from a tube here. And I'm going to work that across the base and up right to where the water and the embankment itself is going to come into contact. So if you do this when the paint's still wet that you've applied for your uh, soil color, you're going to get a really neat fading effect. So just work it into all the little nooks and crannies. And uh, you're going to let that dry. And we're on to the next step. We're going to pour some water. Normally I use two-part epoxy whenever I'm pouring rivers or lakes or anything like that. I thought I'd give Woodland Scenics Realistic Water a try for this little bit. It was such a small pour I didn't uh, want to go to all the effort of having to blend two-part epoxy together. So this is the Realistic Water with a couple drops of Tamaya Black mixed into it just so that it's going to hide any imperfections you may have in the base or along any of the banks. And I just gently poured it in. Now I did find that the stuff doesn't flow the same as a two-part epoxy so it doesn't self-level the same. So I had to work it into all the nooks and crannies with an old brush. Uh, it is a heck of a lot easier to clean up though so that's a nice aspect of it and uh, either material you use is going to be fine here. Uh, as I said this was nice, it was easy to clean up, it didn't go off, give off any gases when it was curing so it certainly does have its advantages but uh, as with anything it has its disadvantages as well. So whatever you're going to use, give or get your water poured and on to the next step. Once you've got everything worked into the nooks and crannies and you're happy with the depth of your water, uh, just make a quick pass over this. I use a torch. You can use a blow dryer, you can use your breath even, uh, blow through a straw. Torch for me works good, it's handy and it, it, it works really quick. All you're doing is just popping the bubbles that may have formed on the surface. If you're using a torch, just make sure you don't linger too long. You don't want to be cooking any of the scenery that you put down. So we're going to let that dry up. I think it took a half a day or a day. And uh, then I figured I'm going to add some texture to the top. So I've got a heavy gloss artist gesso here. And uh, I've got some more of that realistic water. And I'm just going to blend them almost like a one-to-one -one here. Uh, the, the heavy gel is really, really thick. And I use it for putting stiff peaks on rivers. So I didn't want super stiff peaks here. I wanted more of a nice kind of uh, undulating profile to the top of the water. So I cut it with this realistic water. And as you can see, the stuff is really, really thick. If you have gloss medium, you could use that. It's pretty much exactly the same as what I've made here. This might be a touch thicker, but I didn't have any handy. So in essence, I just made my own. The realistic water actually dries with kind of a cool texture. Uh, I wasn't super happy with how glossy it was though. So the gesso and realistic water mix that I've made up is going to take care of some of that shine and it's going to maintain that texture, maybe even give it a little slightly different texture. If you're using epoxy, it's going to dry perfectly flat, so you're going to need that texture regardless. Uh, so once I was happy and I got all my texture down, 
and let that dry up. And I'm going to need a whole bunch of uh, grass clumps for around the outside edge. So I made a bunch up on this wax paper. I just uh, dolloped on some matte medium and then wet at it with the static grass applicator. And I used four mil spring green or uh, like it's a, a nice bright green to represent the grass that would grow and the foliage that would grow around the banks of a marsh. So here I'm just brushing on some matte medium. It's going to act as a glue. And you're going to put this on relatively thick. You don't want to work too big an area at one time, otherwise the stuff's going to dry out. And we got three little processes that have to go on while that stuff's still wet. So get your matte medium applied. And then you're going to pick off and start applying your grass clumps. If you're using self-adhesive grass, grass clumps, that's fine. But still, you want to place them into the matte medium. I don't rely on the self-adhesion factor of those things. So get those things placed in, pressed into the matte medium. As I said, they're going to be right on the edge of the bank because they're going to be sucking up most of that water. And then what we're going to do is take our base color. I use autumn as my base color just because that's the best color that represents the area I'm modeling. And uh, four mil again in the static grass applicator and sprinkle that on. And don't be shy with this. You want to get lots on here. Okay. So give her piles and piles on there. If you think you have enough, put a little bit more on than you definitely do. Then we're going to grab the suck hole and take a nylon, stick it over the end, vacuum up the excess because there's going to be quite a bit of excess here, and then dump that either back into the hopper of your static grass applicator or even better, dump it into a separate bucket or a bin of some sort so you can pick out any impurities that might have gotten in there during this whole process. So I'll just give that a good vacuum, get everything, all the excess up, and then the next step is to help blend everything together and give it a little bit more texture. I just sprinkle over a little bit of fine turf. This is Woodland Scenic's Burnt Grass is the color I use. Just sprinkle that in and it's going to drop through the static grass, stick to the bottom of that matte medium base and it's going to help blend everything in nicely. The vacuum comes out again. We're going to suck up the excess fine turf that we have down there and move on to our next little patch. We'll quickly rattle off the rest of the outside of the marsh here and as I said remember that you're not working too big an area, you want to make sure that that matte medium is staying tacky through this entire process. Uh, we're almost done here. We're going to do a little bit of work on the bank. Uh, there's a culvert that goes between this water and the slack water on the other side of the fill here. So I want to make sure that that's stabilized. I thought maybe some uh, riprap would be in order. So maintenance away. Got this side dump car put on the head end of Lenny, which is a Lethbridge to Nelson manifest and they're going to dump this and we're going to stabilize that culvert and move on to the next step. Rip wrap's been glued into place and I've done a little bit more work on the embankment. I'm just going to finish off the surrounding area. So latex mix goes down, uh, static grass goes down, and then to blend everything together you're going to sprinkle over your fine turf and that's going to tie everything into the existing stuff along the marsh bank. A little bit of glue and water mix. I use a syringe to apply it and I'm pressing coarse turf into that to give it a little bit of texture and a little bit different color. I'm just going to wipe off the top of the water real quick here where I spilled some paint and on to the next step which is just the application of some individual grass tufts here and there. So this is just another way to add some texture and some contrast to your scenery. Uh, as I said before I don't rely on the uh, self-adhesive nature of these things so I'm just dipping them in a little bit of carp carpenter's glue you can use matte medium you can use tacky glue for this and just place some uh, on the layout any place you want to generate a little bit of interest so there you go there's your basic marsh pretty easy to do I'm gonna go in afterwards and uh, I'm gonna scratch build a whole bunch of bulrushes to add to all the various marshes that I put on the layout but that's gonna be at a later date this is gonna get you started and get you well on your way and you can detail it up as you see fit and as you see necessary. So anyway, hope you all give it a whirl. Uh, it's a whole lot of fun, adds a lot of interest in a short amount of time. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and we'll see everybody in the next video.